morning, Anna. <laughs> Once again, we've got multiple things going on today. Some of it's the same old stuff. We've got uh, trucks going in and out to get corn, trucks coming to get soybeans, and uh, we are gonna spray some more aphids today. We've gotta switch some chemical tanks around. Uh, we're spraying for aphids. We're also spraying fungicide. I'm gonna clean up around the bins here. And then we got a little bit of work to do to the overhead doors, so all kinds of stuff. So the idea here is just to backfill behind the concrete walls that we poured here around the conveyor to control the water so that the water flows that way. Some of it's apparently going to puddle right in here. The intention was not to have that conveyor underground like that, but the measurements got off. That's where we ended up. So unfortunately, this is what we had to do. So now I'm just kind of, since the job is complete, going back in, putting some fill in behind the walls to finish things off. Then I want to clean up around here because it's messy, it gets messy. Even though you clean up in the fall, everything gets messy with hauling trucks out in the rain and the leftover crud that falls down. And it's just nice to have that cleaned up before harvest. There's one thing off the daily list. Now we gotta do some chemical swapping. We've got a couple of totes in here that are empty we're gonna pull those out move some full ones in and rearrange everything in the trailer so that one he just pulled out was the nearly empty tank of roundup or generic glyphosate as we call it that we got from FBN this is the AMS Pro right from FBN here just want to let you guys know that FBN now is available in Australia and anybody now throughout the world can go on to FBN Direct, Farmers Business Network Direct, and see the chemical prices without being a member. So if you see the chemical prices, you like them, you can sign up for a membership, mention me, save yourself a hundred bucks, even if you're in Australia. How cool is that? I'm told we need to move the 9560 so that we can get to one of the full tanks. There was some speculation a couple of months ago about us possibly trading this 9560 for a 9570. Essentially a newer model with just a little bit more horsepower. That did not happen. We uh, we looked at it. There was a really nice, there still is a really nice 9570 at our dealership. But uh, the cost that it was going to be to trade made us decide that we should just fix the transmission in this instead. So transmission is fixed. This thing should be ready to go for harvest. Hi, Rhiannon. Hi. Happy birthday, Isla. How old are you now? Five. Five. Happy Feel birthday. Sick. And sick, a little sick. <coughs> hey, wild man. Nice kickers. I gotta get Jim loaded. And then I gotta help Grandpa finish putting chemicals in there. Didge came to tell you happy birthday. Hey, now Onyx came, Onyx. Anna came to say happy birthday. I think Onyx is in the shed talking to Grandpa. Oh, he's in the shed? Isla, I'll be up there when the semi's full. Do you want to have pizza and ice cream? Me too. Okay, I'll see you in a... You don't want ice cream? Ice cream but not pizza. Okay, you can do that too. It's her birthday. Good to go, Seven. How many did you say? Four boxes would be good. Four. So for this tank mix, we've got a thousand gallon tank on the sprayer. We're spraying 15 gallons to the acre. The majority of that is water. Here's what else we're mixing in. We're mixing in some uh, AMS. This is, this is an AMS right here, really just a water conditioner. This is not a 
pesticide, fungicide, insecticide. It's just a water conditioner. This one right here, this is a generic glyphosate or a Roundup. We're mixing in uh, 21 gallons of that to do over 75 acres. Uh, we are mixing in 9.3 gallons of this stuff. This is the insecticide that we spray. It's a generic Lorsban or a Chlorpyrifos. Kind of nasty stuff. We definitely use our PPE when we are dumping that in, for sure. And then down here we've got a fungicide. This is a what we would call a generic Quilt XL. So it's uh, Azoxystrobin and pro Propiconazonazolol, whatever that is, okay? So it's a generic Quilt XL and he ran to go get some more Clethodim, which is a uh, generic uh, volunteer corn killer. So we've got quite a bit in this tank mix, but that's what we're spraying here. Hey Chris, Zach, I need three pizzas today. Two cheese and one all meat. And then a water bottle. It one looks ice. as though I have a house to assemble. Isn't that right? Uh-huh. Oh no, it's it's a dream house. A Barbie dream house. It's not just That's a house. No house. It's a house. Yeah. But Onyx has something all right, here we go. We're testing it. Is it gonna work? New pitching machine. Ooh. Seemed like it worked. Like Let's just crank run. this up to 10. There we go. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough horsing around. Back to work. You want me to top it off? Top it off. Top it off. You're full again, Seven. I better go build that dream house thing. It's her birthday. We'll get that done. Okay, girls, I'm gonna show you a trick. Are you ready? This is gonna be pretty cool. Here we go. What do you think, girls? Good. Good? Yeah. And yeah. we only have one extra piece that dad has no idea where this one goes. I bet you'll figure it out. Yep. Little low and outside, maybe? Eye on it, bud. Watch it all the way to the bat. All right, here we go. Mm. There you go. That's short. Okay, for real this time, enough goofing around. Did you get half of John sprayed? Yeah, I got half of it done. Perfect. The beans look good, but there's a lot of weeds there. More than we'd like, more than most years. Hopefully not anymore. Some common ragweed. Common? Common ragweed, yeah, we haven't had that for years. But no. So every time we have to replace a belt or get to a pulley or do some motor work, we end up taking these shields off because it makes everything easier to get to. Sometimes they break off on their own. The rest of the time they're essentially just in the way. However, now that Becky and I live out here with the kids and the two dogs, I've decided to put uh, a good amount of these shields back on. There, that's better. We actually don't even have enough to cover all the belts, all the augers, because over the years they break or they get lost or what have you, but we should probably get some more, but at least I feel a little bit better now. Hey, look at that. There's one. It's so hot out. One more off the list. And the next one is in the shade. This door needs an adjustment. So I need to get up there using this machine right here. Jim's back. I don't really know what I'm doing and I don't like heights at all. So you think it's just a sensor adjustment? Well, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I would say. I guess we'll see what's under this cover. On your cover there, it should tell you whatever yeah. they There's plenty of stuff to mess up there by the looks of it. <laughs> oh, I 
was intended to help you understand why a garage door with a wall-mounted garage door opener won't fully close. Yeah, watch the bottom. So you see how far it is now? Yep. Is it about an inch and a half? Yeah, probably. Okay, I'm gonna turn this dial one direction. Okay. And then... Where's it at now? About the same. Okay, I gotta go farther than he said. We'll see if this... Oh no, what's going on? Is it getting the photo? I'll bet the lift's in the way of the photo eye now. Is that the deal down there? Uh, no, nope, shouldn't be. Oh, it, worse. It's worse? Yes. Quite a bit. I'll go back twice as far the other way then. Is it doing anything? Now you're adjusting the opening then instead of the closing. Instead of the closing? Let's see what it does when I close it now. You know, so you just told me there should be two different ones. Yeah. One for opening, one for closing. Yeah. Yeah. Adjust. I found another one. <laughs> it's tucked back there. It's a lot harder to see, but now I know. <laughs> yes. Now it's sealed. Right there. That's perfect. Push the seal a little bit. That, yeah, right there. Go any tighter. Okay, we got the opener adjusted, or the, the door adjusted, so as long as I'm up here now, got a couple new openers here. Now I gotta find the learn button somewhere. Ah. Beautiful. I've, I've been up here an hour and a half, so the next door should take me about six minutes. Okay, we're good. Now that I am well versed in all things LiftMaster garage door control, the final thing that I'm going to do as long as I'm up here and I've got the lift out is use this WD-40 Specialist Dirt and Dust Resistant Dry Lube PTFE Spray. I've decided to use this because I like the dry lube idea of getting inside those rollers and inside the hinges here because the shop is always dusty. You leave the doors open on windy days and there's always dust in and out. So this should attract a lot less dust and uh, be like a dry, a dry lubricant film inside the rollers. Got to hit the springs a little bit as well. Got a second door done here. I'm being told I need to run up to the house to eat cake and open presents for Isla's birthday before my soybean truck comes in. 30 40 minutes and that sounds like something I'm willing to do but I'm not gonna walk all the way to the house because we have a ranger now whoa look at that trucks here Didge you excited let's go get it on somebody really needs to wash these windows Look how handy that is. It's telling me now, instead of the weight in the cart, it's telling me how much I've unloaded, which is handy. Um, I guess you can actually program it so that the cart will shut itself off at the exact weight, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that today because I have not researched that yet. The truck is gone and Dad is back. He got the tank empty, but apparently now there's an oil leak on there and the booms are not working correctly, so he can he can fold and unfold the booms, but apparently there's what looks to be a heck of an oil leak in the back. So I suppose we'll take a look at that. Around the accumulator, yeah. the next to the rotary girder. So I didn't run water through the booms, so there's still chemical in there. Uh huh. Where's, what's that from? It's just running down. Oil's running down the accumulator and down onto there. Sure. That's not in the back by the accumulator. And that's hot oil. This is water. No, there's hot oil being sprayed out under the very center. It's that same exact solenoid that we just put a, an O-ring on. We'll so there's a whole there's a whole second one because this one's running too. Yeah. You can't see where it's coming from. 
Well, how lucky are we to have two major oil leaks at once on one machine? So that appears to be coming from also an O-ring probably inside that solenoid. Oh yeah, no doubt. It's a second solenoid leaking out of the O-ring. Really? Pushing it right out. How can that be? Could we, could it somehow have overpressured the system? I don't know. It really is just always something on a farm. Can anybody else relate? Well, the one underneath was the exact one we fixed two weeks ago. That's really strange, isn't it? Yeah, and the one on the back was this, uh, that one there. The one off to the side there? Yep, coming out the side. So that's the easy one to get to. Yeah. It's late enough. He wasn't going to spray anymore today anyway, and I'll have another truck in tonight. Got to load uh, one for Jim. Got to finish our deal in the house with Isla, so I'm going to run in, finish that up, and... I'm just going to quit videotaping for the day. So uh, thank you guys for watching. I'm going to enjoy the evening without the camera. Until next time, keep her between the rows. <laughs>